When we hear the term voltage regulator, most of us think of a box like this. And nominally, that's fine. However, to be accurate, the voltage regulator is only one of two or perhaps three electronic controls inside this box. That's why many of our shop manuals don't call this a voltage regulator. They, more accurately, call this the control box. Let's take a look inside. This box has two controls in it. The one on the left, this is our voltage regulator. The default position for the set of points for this is to be closed. They're right up on top here. A spring is holding them closed. When the key is on, these points are the bridge that brings power from the ignition switch to the field windings in the generator. So when your car is sitting all night in the driveway, these points are closed. When you first start your car, they're still closed. A moment after starting the engine, the spinning generator is making electricity. Voltage climbs quickly. This electromagnet grows in strength. It grows until it pulls these points apart. At that instant, the current to the generator's field stops. The field is neutralized and the generator stops making electricity. Voltage quickly falls. The electromagnet weakens. The spring-loaded points close again. It's a cycle. Up, down, up, down, up, down. By rapidly cycling, or opening and closing, or off and on, if you will, the current the generator makes is regulated. In fact, if you were to get, if this was running, if you put a little rubber hose in one of your ears and held it down near here and got up listen real close, like a doctor listening to your heart, it sounds like a bee. It's going bzzz. They're really, really fast. And that's how she regulates the current. Now, what is this? What does this do? Well, when the motor is running, the generator is doing her job, she's making electricity. Part of that electricity is sent to the battery to recharge it. The rest goes to other parts of the car that need power. This keeps the battery charged and keeps the lights and the ignition happy. In order to charge the battery, we need a bridge between the generator and the battery. That's this device. This is the subject of this video. This is the cutout relay. The default setting for this set of points is open. Okay, A spring holds them open. So when the car is parked in the driveway all night, these points are open. For the first few moments after you start your engine in the morning, these points are open. When these points are open, there is no bridge between the generator and the battery. As soon as the generator begins to make electricity, this electromagnet pulls these points closed. When the points are closed, power from the generator is allowed to flow to the battery. These points do not regulate. They don't cycle rapidly. There's no buzzing. They're naturally open when the motor is off, and they are closed when the motor is on and the generator is making electricity. So why are they naturally open? Why don't we want a bridge between the generator and the battery all the time? Well, let's imagine we're driving down the road. The motor is spinning, the generator is making electricity, the regulator is keeping the amount of electricity that's going to the battery in a nice safe range. The points of the cutout relay are closed because of the magnet. Current from the generator is flowing to the battery. Everything is working exactly as it should. Now, imagine we come home and we turn off the car and walk away. If this bridge between the battery and the generator is still in place, i.e. the points of the cutout relay are somehow stuck closed, what will happen? Well, it's not hard to imagine. Just like water flows downhill, electricity flows toward ground. When the motor is off, the generator is no longer pushing out current. And also, and this is important, there's a ground inside the generator. If there's a bridge between the battery and the generator, power from the battery will begin to run backward to the generator to reach ground. That's a problem. A big problem. Why? Well, note this. On its best day, the generator in these classic cars might make 25 amps. Your car's wiring harness is designed to handle that. A battery can have 400, 600, even more amps. When the battery is feeding backward through the harness to the generator, the cables and the components that were designed to face 25 amps now face six times that much or more. Damage can come in less than a minute. The wires between the battery and the control box can melt. The cutout relay will melt. The cable from the control box to the generator will melt. The windings inside the generator can melt. They can all melt. We can have a fire. So how does this cutout relay protect my car? Remember, the natural position for these points, this bridge, is open.
So unless something happens to close these points, there is no bridge or link between the battery and the generator. The current can't flow from the battery backward to the generator. Now, normal voltage for the battery in your car with the motor off and no charging is 12.6 volts. When adjusted correctly, the electromagnet here is not strong enough to pull these points closed with only 12.6 volts. So when you turn the motor off and the generator stops making electricity, system voltage drops to 12.6. The electromagnet lets the spring pull the points open. No bridge between the generator and the battery. So the points of the cutout really are really supposed to be closed when we're running our engine and making electricity. They're supposed to be open when we're not running and making electricity. When the parts are working correctly, we never have dangerous current running backwards through this cutout relay. What can we do to make sure the things are working as they should be? How can we make sure the points aren't stuck shut? Well, if you're installing a new control box, clean the contacts points with sandpaper, both sets. After you've cleaned them, set the voltage according to the specs in your shop manual. The adjustments are right here. That's easy. Okay, and then with the cover off, run the engine to about 1500 revolutions per minute and watch to see that they're working as they should. If you've bought a new control box that's already been cleaned and adjusted, take the cover off and watch the voltage regulator and watch it work. Watch the cutout relay work. At about 1500 revolutions per minute, the points of the voltage regulator should be buzzing. The system should be maintained at around 13 or 14 volts. The contacts of the cutout relay should be closed. When the motor is off, the regulator contacts should be closed. The cutout relay contacts should be open. And once or twice a year, a quick cleaning of your points of the regulator and the points of your cutout relay with a little bit of sandpaper take about four minutes. You can do that with a control box mounted in the car with the wire still connected. It's easy. So, a small swatch of sandpaper and a couple of minutes of your time will keep your cutout relay healthy and happy and actively protecting your classic British car.